When extraction started, I was like, whoa, what's with all this story? I'm not watching extraction for story. But then, at the end of extraction, I cried. I did not expect to cry while watching extraction. So you got me, Sam Hargrave and Joe Russo. You got me. Now, yes, this is not only produced by the Russo brothers, but Joe Russo has returned to screenwriting. While Sam Hargrave, former Captain America stunt double, uh, I, I feel like one of the reasons maybe he stopped being a stunt double, not only because he's, he upgraded to a stunt coordinator uh, on a couple of Marvel movies, but he seems to really love this crazy beard that he has, and he obviously can't have that as Cap. It's a, it's a ZZ Top beard. I mean, it's impressive. Uh, but this is his directorial debut. Oh, very exciting. Very exciting. Also, fun fact, he has a small role in the movie as a member of Chris Hemsworth's team. I was like, oh, wow, it's Sam Hargrave. Oh, that's awesome. And I have to say, as a director, I see a very bright future for Mr. Hargrave. Now, you might recall that when I reacted to the trailer for Extraction, I pondered if Hargrave could follow in the footsteps of David Leach and Chad Stahelski fellow stuntmen turned directors. They had a couple of stops in between. They actually have one of the most famous uh, stunt houses in all of Hollywood, uh, which I didn't even know about until recently. I think that's so cool. I love to see the stunt industry develop. Um, where is their Oscar category? If John Wick 3 couldn't get an Oscar category for stunts, I don't know. At least it started, at least it got people to start the conversation again. Anyway, I think the answer is yes, Sam Hargrave is definitely cut from the same cloth. The action scenes here are superb! And some of them, it's not wall-to-wall -wall action like a John Wick movie, just so you know. Again, again, I was like, why is there so much story in here? But by the end of the movie, I appreciated all the story. But there are a lot, there are a good amount of action scenes. I felt I got my action scenes worth. And some of them are on par, I would even say, they're almost John Wick 3 level. They don't have the artistry of Chad Stahelski. You know, he keep, Chad Stahelski keeps that notebook of cool ideas for where stunt scenes could take place. But Sam Hargrave, I think, could get there. The, scene, the action sequences are very well done. And just like Keanu Reeves, Chris Hemsworth delivers, doing a lot of the action himself. He has been, he's been doing a lot of behind the scenes videos uh, lately and he's shown that some people have stepped in on some of the stunts and I think that's great that he makes that known so you can see who, that this is a team effort, it's a collaborative effort and that there is a skill set to being a stunt person. But there's a lot of scenes where Chris Hemsworth is doing it himself. And I love a lot of close quarters fighting, that was great. Um, I really like this movie. Uh, and also, you know, they had a lot of times, uh, a number of combatants take on Chris Hemsworth at once, and I thought that the movie did a very good job of making it believable that he could take them all on. It was great. And also using the location to his advantage, because when you're in close quarters like in uh, India, in these settings, you know, you can only be attacked by so many people at once even if you're being rushed, because there's just not that much space. It was really good. Some good hallway fights. We love a hallway fight. During the action scenes, I laughed out loud several times. They were so much fun to watch. They were intense, vicious, and very well thought out. A lot of stabby, stab, stab. Uh, I loved that. That was great. I also, but I also gasped, jumped, and a few times actually had to look away. But overall, I do love to watch a professional work, and here, that's a professional mercenary. Chris Hemsworth's Tyler Rake is very good at his job, even when this shit hits the fan. And that's courtesy of the screenwriter and again co-producer Joe Russo, although Chris Hemsworth is also a producer here. Good to see him getting more work for himself that's a very good fit. I do miss funny Chris Hemsworth, but that didn't work out so well with Men in Black, so I respect him continuing to change it up and, and see where see where his path lies. Well, he's still making Marvel movies. He's the only one who got a fourth. Um, I, you know, I, I'm curious to see where, I, th I think he should be able to have a career outside of Marvel and I think this is a, a great step in that direction. Uh, but anyway, back to the screenwriting. So Joe Russo, he comes up with a very nice setup. I mean, again, it's like, there's a formula to this type of movie, and I think that Joe Russo does that. He executes the formula, but with enough additions that it seems fresh and interesting. You know, I mean, a lot of movies are the same. There are a lot of, but it's the people making its job, and you know, casting actors that you know you like to see that that you know make it make it worth taking the journey again. So, from a script perspective, 
Uh, I thought there were some really good, genuine twists that I didn't see coming. Uh, and, you know, and most impressive about the script is that Russo did make me care about a number of people who do really bad things. Like, for instance, there's one guy in the movie in particular who what he does is so egregious. I was like, wow, you should kill that guy. And I thought I'd never be able to forgive him. But God damn it, at the end of the movie, I was like, you're okay, buddy. You're okay. So the movie also has some great life lessons, including one of the best pieces of advice I ever heard. I was like, oh, I'm saving that and putting it in the vault. This is something that Ovi tells Tyler during a heart-to-heart -heart conversation about halfway through the movie. Again, I was like, why have we stopped? I don't want to sit through this conversation. And then I was like, oh, maybe I do. I definitely do. Now, I've heard some people criticize this movie by saying it's another white savior situation. And I see your point but I have a counterpoint for you. So Chris Hemsworth is going to get a lot of people to watch this movie, and it's not whitewashing a role, which was, his, which was people's problem with Exodus. The recent Christian uh, Bale and uh, Joel Edgerton movie, where Ridley Scott's excuse was, well, I need people to go and see the movie. Well, this is a situation where they wrote in a character from Australia. I think he's supposed to be an American, but he's living in Australia at the beginning of the movie. Whatever. For a white guy to be at the heart of this story, the script makes it organic. And Chris Hemsworth, again, does a very nice job here with both the action and the emotional elements. And yeah, David Harbour does have a cameo, and I was like, oh, you guys are both in the MCU now. So, you know, but it's a small cameo, and David Harbour is very David Harbour-y. But the entire rest of the cast is from the region. They do a great job, and they have a tremendous amount of screen time. So let's talk about them. So Randeep Huda is Hemsworth's Indian counterpart and does as good a job with his action scenes. I liked him a lot. Iranian actress, uh, I'm trying very hard with the pronunciation here, Iranian actress Golshifta Farani ended up being a really cool character. Did not like her in the trailer. The trailer does not do this movie any justice. But I actually really liked her so much that I would cast her as the new Mystique. Her hair, her eyebrows, her eyelashes, what a profile, amazing. She has a very dramatic look and she would be a perfect uh, choice for a comics accurate version of Mystique. Wait till you... You have to watch the whole movie, but at the end of the movie, you'll be like, she's awesome. Uh, Priyanshu uh, Penuli makes for a very charismatic and threatening crime lord. I thought he did a great job with his scenes. Uh, relative newcomer uh, Rud, uh, Rudrakish Jaiswal is actually a really great find. I didn't think he popped in the trailer. I was very critical of him in the trailer. Uh, but in the movie itself... I thought he was great. I thought he was very likable. He holds his own opposite Chris Hemsworth. And the script gives him, again, nice thanks to Joe Russo, his character has some really excellent moments. That uh, Jay Wall del delivers. Uh, Siraj Rakami also ended up making a very strong impression. I really liked setting the film in India. I thought that was great. And I feel that Hargrave does a very nice job using the location to make the film, again, as I said, stand apart from other films like this. Like the beginning of the movie, it's like wide angle lens of the movie. But when your locations are that gorgeous, of course you want to show them off. I appreciated it. And I really like movies like this. This is definitely one of the better ones for sure. And again, I do feel that it has action scenes on par with John Wick. They aren't as artistic, they're not quite as clever, but, and as I said, it's not non-stop action, but Hargrave, I think, is well on his way. I think he's very good. I also want to give a shout out to the camera work. The camera work is very good. They've got tracking shots, long takes, you name it. There was one thing where they ran down an alley and then got into a truck and it was all a long take. And I'm like, how'd you do that? It was very cool. And some scenes really felt like a video game, which I thought was done in a very effective way that plussed the movie. I thought that was great. And then Hargrave and Russo got me to cry too. What a visceral roller coaster. The movie, in fact, has stuck with me since I watched it last night. I keep thinking about it. It was cool. It was a really good movie. Now finally, I would like to dedicate this review to someone who I think would have really enjoyed this movie, and that's BTT viewer Eddie. Now tragically, a few weeks ago, Eddie had a massive heart attack, which destroyed his brain. And he was on life support. And because of the, you'll notice I'm saying was. Now because of the current pandemic, only his immediate family was able to visit him in the hospital, be there when he was taken off of life support this week, and only they will be able to go to his funeral. Now, you might be wondering how I know all this. Well, I know this because Eddie's brother, Val, reached out to me. He wrote to me, his brother and his best friend, and he wrote to me because he wanted to do something to 
get his brother's memory out there. But again, because he's limited by the pandemic, he, did, he didn't have a lot of options. So he asked if I could dedicate a video to Eddie. And of course I can. Val and Eddie loved movies. Uh, Eddie got Val into my videos, which I am uh, could not be more honored about. Uh, Eddie was Team DC, Val Team Marvel. Eddie a Slytherin, uh, Val a Gryffindor. Eddie, I'm totally with you on those two. I'm totally, I love, we all love all of them. But of course, I lean towards DC and Slytherin. Uh, and Eddie's favorite Disney movie was Coco. And that film really showed the importance of people rem remembering who we've lost. And I can tell you, and I feel really good having spoken with Val, that it's clear that Eddie was very loved and continues to be very loved. So Eddie, this video is for you and we will all remember you.